What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video is all about starting line enhancers. What are they? Why would you want one? And we're also going to dive into how to set up and adjust a starting line enhancer. Stay tuned. Before we hop into this video, it's important to note that this video is sponsored by K&R Performance Engineering. K&R Performance Engineering provides a device called a Pro Stage, which is a starting line enhancer that we're going to be covering in today's video. Most of the content inside of this video is still relevant to all kinds of starting line enhancers, but once we get to the setup and adjustment portion of the video, please note that that is specific to the Pro Stage device available at krperformance.com. If you are in need of a starting line enhancer or any of the trick bracket racing products available at krperformance.com. Do not forget to utilize discount code GALLSTAR5. Save yourself 5% at checkout over at krperformance.com. Links in the description. So first, let's start off with what is a starting line enhancer? A starting line enhancer is basically a pneumatic cylinder that is in line with the throttle cable going to your carburetor. What it does is that it controls the throttle action of the carburetor during the starting line sequence. Not to be confused with a throttle stop, which is a very similar device. A throttle stop is used to control the throttle action of the carburetor down track while you're on the track. A starting line enhancer is very similar, but everything that the starting line enhancer does is done before the car even launches. A throttle stop is typically used for index or like super class racing. A starting line enhancer can be used for any bracket racer. The two biggest things that a starting line enhancer does is it controls what RPM you are staging the car at, and it also controls when your car goes to wide open throttle. It controls the timing of that. Those are the primary two uses of a starting line enhancer. So let's dive into why you would want a starting line enhancer. The first thing, and not really the reason why I use it, but one thing that I know people use starting line enhancers for is to actually control that RPM that they are staging the car at. For some cars, it may be hard to stage the car consistently and to get the car in the beams at the exact same spot, lap after lap. Maybe your car is just set up to idle really, really low for some reason, and sometimes it'll roll into the beams really, really nicely, and the next time it seems like you gotta get on the throttle a little bit to get into the beams. Or maybe your car rolls into the beams just fine normally, but then if you go to a super, super sticky track, maybe your car actually doesn't wanna roll on that sticky track, and you can't quite get into the beams quite as easily as you're used to. With a starting line enhancer, you can bump up that RPM a little bit while you're staging, so it's super consistent and the car rolls super consistently and get yourself locked into the beams at the exact same spot lap after lap. The second reason I can think of to have a starting line enhancer is actually the reason that I got it and that is to control the timing at which the car goes to wide open throttle. So let's just think about a typical starting line sequence once without the use of a starting line enhancer. If you're the slower car, you react to the tree, let go of the trans brake button, and then you probably floor the car immediately after that. There's no problem at all with doing that. I've done it for years and years, and I believe that you can get really, really consistent with how you do that. So there's no problem there. But when you're the faster car, you need to react to the tree, let go of your trans brake button, but then maybe there's a long spot. It could be like two, three, four, even five seconds. Maybe it's a really slow car in the other lane. Then you need to wait to mat your car until your second ball comes on. And once that second ball comes on, you gotta be ready because you don't have a lot of time before your trans brake is gonna let go. So long story short, what's happening without a starting line enhancer is potential inconsistency as to when the car is reaching wide open throttle relative to when the trans brake is going to release. With an enhancer such as the K&R Performance Pro Stage, your car is going to be decked to wide open throttle at the exact same point on the tree, lap after lap. It doesn't matter if you're leaving first or if you have a really long five second spot in the other lane, your car is going to be at wide open throttle at the exact same point in time ahead of when the trans brake releases in every single situation. So why does this even matter? Why does it matter if your car is 
up on the converter for one second before the trans brake releases or four seconds before the trans brake releases? Why, why is it so critical? It comes down to more consistent reaction times and more consistent 60 foot times. After talking with Kevin over at K&R Performance, he gave me this analogy of a cereal bowl being your converter. So think of your converter in your car as a cereal bowl. If you have cereal in your cereal bowl and you take a spoon and you start spinning the cereal in the cereal bowl, if you spin it for one second, it gets going so fast. If you spin it for two seconds, it gets going way faster. If you spin it for five seconds, it gets going way, 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 way faster. And when it's all said and done, it doesn't matter how hard you spin the cereal in the cereal bowl. If you only spin it for one second, you're not gonna get it up to the same speed as if you spin it for three seconds. This is kind of the same thing that's happening inside of your converter. And that's why it's so important to be up on your converter at wide open throttle for the same duration of time lap after lap. In my experience, having a starting line enhancer makes driving the car feel way more like hitting the practice tree. It actually makes hitting the practice tree feel much more worthwhile just because the two situations are much more similar when you have a starting line enhancer. When you're hitting a practice tree, you have one thing on the mind, hit the bulb. When you're at the starting line without a starting line enhancer, there's a few more things clogging up the mind. And one of those things is, when to deck the car. Back in my days before I used a starting line enhancer, I hardly ever used the bump. I had both buttons. I had a, a bump up and a bump down button in my car, but I hardly ever used them. That's because I didn't have that time on the starting line to actually properly analyze how I hit the tree and physically hit a button because my mind was preoccupied with something else and that was actually getting the car up on the converter at the right time. So. With that said, a starting line enhancer just takes that one thing off of the driver's plate. It, it frees up the brain for that little time period that you have to actually analyze how did you hit the tree? Do I need to use a bump up or a bump down button? You actually have time to make those decisions and execute them with the use of a starting line enhancer. All right guys, let's take a quick look at how the k and Pro Stage is actually set up on the car. Please excuse how dirty this car is. It's 100 plus degrees out here. We've just been doing some laps and it is way too hot to be cleaning this car. But you are going to need some sort of a mounting system. Uh, what we have here is the bracket from Low Car. This is an actually really nice piece. Um, it's set up very nice and works good with the K&R Pro Stage. It's actually available at krperformance.com. So you can go ahead and buy that krperformance.com and you can use the discount code GALLSTAR5. Save yourself a few coins on the low car bracket as well. But here is the Pro Stage and I do like this bracket because it actually has a, a nice spot back here to mount the solenoid. So you'll have to keep that in mind. You do need to mount that solenoid somewhere um, up here by your cylinder. As far as connections go, you will need to have air or CO2 plumbed up to the actual solenoid and then there's this small little eighth inch jumper over to the cylinder. So as far as wiring goes, there's two wires on the solenoid. One of them's really easy. It's just a ground. I just have mine looped underneath, connected as a ground. And then the other wire uh, goes to your Pro Cube. So the Pro Stage wire is a yellow wire uh, and that connects up to the Pro Cube delay box. I'll put a picture on the screen to kind of show where that connection point is uh, to hook your Pro Stage up. So that's literally all of the connections for this Pro Stage unit. As far as operating this unit, you must have a bump down button installed in your car and wire that bump down button to the bump down terminal on your Pro Cube. That is how you're going to activate the starting line enhancer when you're using a Pro Cube paired with the Pro Stage. That is how it's done. So you have to have this button right here. So I'll do my best to kind of illustrate an example here. Let's just say that nothing is activated on the Pro Stage, uh, ignition is on, this cylinder stays in its uh, fully compressed state so this air is pressurized and it's pushing this piston into the cylinder so everything is solid here if i were to push on the gas pedal it would pull the carburetor open just like a regular throttle linkage here as soon as i activate the pro stage by clicking the bump down button it is going to exhaust the cylinder and basically this piston is going to be allowed to exit and it's gonna be basically limp and we're gonna push the throttle pedal down and this is basically gonna get longer, let me show you. So activate the pro stage. You could hear it over here. 
Now, it did not move because I don't have my foot on the gas right now, but if I did have my foot on the gas, it would pull this out like this and basically pull the carburetor open just ever so slightly. You may not even be able to see that on the camera. I feel pretty good. It's like, well, you can't make it there now. And that's basically uh, like a couple hundred RPM or maybe like a hundred RPM. You can adjust it to whatever you want. And that is a consistent RPM that you can then bump in and stage your car at. So it's just kind of a consistency thing. It allows you to stage the car at the exact same RPM every single time. And your foot is already planted on the gas pedal. The more you thread this in, the less travel you're getting out of this cylinder. The overall length of this unit does not change just the amount of travel so when you mess with threading this in and out of the body of the cylinder all you are messing with is how much travel the cylinder has not the overall length let's just imagine a fake extreme situation where I thread this threaded rod into the body like an inch what's gonna happen is it's gonna push this piston out by an inch so the overall length did not change so when this is pressurized it's sitting at this point and you mat the throttle on the car it's gonna go to wide open throttle however when it's activated it's only gonna go in not as far as you want it's only going in this far so you're gonna have like a lot of rpm on the starting line enhancer if that makes sense so the more you thread this rod into that body the more rpm you're getting out of your carburetor when you're on the enhancer. I wanna to try to clarify that cylinder adjustment with a graphic. So in the top image, you'll see a cylinder here with the threaded rod all the way threaded out of the body of the cylinder. This is gonna allow for maximum amount of cylinder travel, if that makes sense. That's gonna give you the maximum amount of actuation out of this cylinder. So if that amount of cylinder travel that's outlined in blue there, if that equals the amount of travel required to open your carburetor to wide open throttle, if it's equal, then you'll basically be at exactly idle when you turn that enhancer on. Because when you turn that enhancer on, the pressure is going to exhaust out of the backside of the piston of that cylinder. It's gonna allow you to pull that piston out of that cylinder when you push down the gas pedal. So it's gonna give you that full amount of travel and you're basically not gonna touch the carburetor at all when you're on that enhancer. This is basically how I have mine set up. I have it set up so that it basically doesn't even touch the carburetor at all. It's pretty much staging the car at an idle. Alternatively, if you look at this bottom picture, you can see that we threaded the threaded rod into the body of the cylinder a long ways. This does not change the overall length of the cylinder at all, as you can see shown here in red, but it does change the amount of travel that the cylinder is capable of. So in this situation, when you activate the starting line enhancer and you take the pressure away from the cylinder, you're only gonna have a portion of that travel that you had in the top situation. So when you push the gas pedal down, a portion of that is going to be taken up by the enhancer, but the rest of it is gonna be taken up when it moves the entire cylinder and it pulls your carburetor open. So when you thread that threaded rod into the cylinder, let's say an inch, then you're gonna be getting an inch of travel when you activate the enhancer and throttle your car. So you'll basically be having one inch of throw on your throttle cable opening up your carburetor, if that makes sense. Anyways guys, I hope this helps to clarify a little bit about what a starting line enhancer is, why you might want one, and then how to get started, get it set up, and how to actually use it. If you have any questions about starting line enhancers, definitely leave them down in the comments below. I did my very best to explain it, but it's kind of a difficult thing to explain. If you're at all interested in snagging one of these starting line enhancers for your own race car, go and check them out. Links down in the description. It's krperformance.com. They have the exact same pro stage unit that I use. Do not forget to use discount code GALLSTAR5. Save yourself a little bit of money at checkout over at krperformance.com. As always, thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, all the things that you do. Visit the GALLSTAR TV swag shop to get stuff like this, support the creation of more videos. I will see you guys in the next one. Later!